Salmonella Part 2 Let's see about the pathogenicity of Salmonella. It causes three main diseases, enteric fever, Salmonella gastroenteritis and septicemia caused due to Salmonella. First, enteric fever. The enteric fever consists of typhoid fever which is caused by Salmonella typhi and Paratyphoid fever caused by Salmonella paratyphi A, B and C. The infection occurs by ingestion and the bacilli reach the gut where they attach to the microvilli of the ileal mucosa and from there they penetrate to the lamina propria and the submucosa where they are phagocytosed by macrophages. But they resist killing by these two mechanisms. First is by modifying the lipopolysaccharide and second is by inhibiting the phagolysosome formation. So they are not killed by the macrophages. So from there the bacilli enters the lymphatics where they multiply and through the thoracic duct they enter the bloodstream causing bacteremia. And the bacteria are seeded into various organs where they further multiply to cause the disease. So this is the pathogenicity of enteric fever. Coming to the clinical course. The enteric fever is most common in the age group of 5 to 20 years. Its incubation period is 1 to 2 weeks. And the clinical course varies from mild undifferentiated pyrexia that is mild undifferentiated fever to rapidly fatal disease. The onset. Onset of symptoms is usually gradual with headache, malice, anorexia, coated tongue and abdominal discomfort. The abdominal discomfort can be either constipation or diarrhea. The typical features of enteric fever. There is step ladder type of pyrexia with relative bradycardia and toxemia. There is presence of soft and palpable spleen and hepatomegaly. Rose spots are present that fade on pressure appeared on the skin. The rose spots appear in second or third weeks. These rose spots are rarely noticed in dark skin patients. Next is complications of enteric fever. The most important complications are intestinal perforation, hemorrhage and circulatory collapse. Other complications include bronchitis and bronchopneumonia which are seen commonly and some other complications are psychosis, deafness or meningitis which occur very rarely in some cases. Other complications include cholecystitis, arthritis, abscesses, periosteitis, nephritis, hemolytic anemia, thrombosis, and peripheral neuritis. The Salmonella paratyphi A and B causes paratyphoid fever which is similar to typhoid but it is milder than typhoid. Whereas the Salmonella paratyphi C causes paratyphoid fever which is very severe where there is septicemia with suppurative complications. Carriers. The carriers are of three types convalescent carriers, temporary carriers, or chronic carriers. First is convalescent carriers. The patients who continue to shed typhoid bacilli in their feces for three weeks to three months after the clinical cure are called as convalescent carriers. The patients who shed bacilli for more than 3 months but less than a year 
they are called as temporary carriers and the patients who shed bacilli for over an year are called as chronic carriers so the patients shedding typhoid bacilli in feces for 3 weeks to 3 months are convalescent carriers 3 months to less than a year are temporary carriers and more than a year are called as chronic carriers about 2 to 4% of the patients are chronic carriers and the carrier state is most common in females and in the older age groups that is more than 40 years the shedding of bacilli is intermittent the shedding can be either in feces or in the urine if the bacilli are shed in the feces such patients are called as fecal carriers and if the shedding of bacilli is in urine they are called as urinary carriers but the urinary carriers are less frequent let's see the lab diagnosis of enteric fever the lab diagnosis includes isolation of bacilli from the patient and the demonstration of antibodies in the patient serum first is collection of specimen the specimens collected are blood urine and stool for culture and the serum for vidal test second is blood culture positive blood culture is diagnostic of enteric fever the blood culture is positive in about 90% of cases in the first week of fever in about 75% of cases in the second week of fever and in about 60% of cases in the third week and about 25% cases till the subsidence of the fever in mekonki agar there is non lactose fermenting pale colored colonies subculture repetition should be done that is if the first culture is negative subculture should be repeated and the culture is declared negative only after the incubation of 10 days this subculture is performed using a method called as castaneda method next is zero typing by slide agglutination third is clot culture this can be performed alternative to blood culture and it also yields higher rate of isolation of the bacilli fourth is feces culture this is as valuable as blood culture in diagnosis the culture of feces is positive both in patients as well as carriers because even the carriers shed the bacilli in their feces in mekonki and dca media dca stands for deoxycholate citrate agar media there is pale colored colonies in xld medium xylose lysine deoxycholate medium there is pink colored colonies with black center in wilson blair medium the salmonella typhi produces large black colored colonies with metallic sheen and the salmonella para typhi a produces green colored colonies because of the absence of h2s production these black colored colonies are due to the production of h2s we have seen in detail about the culture media in the part 1 of the salmonella video fifth is urine culture urine culture is less useful than the blood or fecal cultures because the salmonella are shed in the urine irregularly and infrequently and also the urine culture is positive only in second and third weeks and then only in about 25% of the cases other materials used for culture are bone marrow and bile culture next is serology vidal reaction this vidal reaction is a test for the measurement of h and o agglutinins for typhoid and para typhoid bacilli in the patient serum the h agglutinin is flagellar antigen 
and the O antigen is somatic antigen. For the viral reaction, two types of tubes are used, the Dreyer's agglutination tube and the Felix tube. The Dreyer agglutination tube is a narrow tube with a conical bottom and the Felix tube is a short tube with a round bottom. The Dreyer's agglutination tube is used for H agglutination and the Felix tube is used for O agglutination. In H agglutination, there is formation of loose cotton woolly clumps. And in O agglutination, it is seen as disc like patterns at the bottom of the tube. In both these, the supernatant is clear. The antigens used are H and O antigens of Salmonella typhi and H antigen of Salmonella paratyphi A and B. Important to notice the paratyphoid O antigen is not used. This is because they cross react with the typhoidal O antigen due to the sharing of factor 12. Nowadays the ready made Vidal kits of stained antigens are available commercially and they are used widely now. The immunoglobulin M detection kits. They are useful in diagnosis of infection in the initial weeks in a primary infection when a single CM sample is only available. So the IgM detection kits detect the IgM antibodies to the lipopolysaccharide or the outer membrane protein antigens. The eighth is PCR based test, polymerase chain reaction based test. These are also sensitive but they are not widely available. Next is demonstration of circulating antigens. This is performed in the early phase of the disease and also in the urine of the patients. This is performed by sensitized staphylococcal coagglutination test. Here the staphylococcus aureus that is coven 1 strain of staphylococcus aureus which contains protein A is stabilized with formaldehyde and it is coated with salmonella typhi antibody. When one person suspension of such sensitized staphylococcal cells is mixed on a slide with the serum from the patient, the typhoid antigen present in the serum combines with the antibody which is attached to the staphylococcal cells and it produces visible agglutination within 2 minutes. This is sensitized staphylococcal coagglutination test. This is a rapid sensitive and a specific test but this is positive only in the first week of disease. So this is not positive after first week of the disease. Other lab tests performed are white blood cell count in which there is leukopenia with relative lymphocytosis. Coming to the prophylaxis. The general measures of prophylaxis are improvement in sanitation and provision of protected water supply. Next is vaccines. Different types of vaccines are available. First is TAB vaccine which contains heat killed typhoid bacillus vaccine. This contains Salmonella typhi 1000 million and Salmonella paratyphi A and B 750 million each per ml. They are killed by heating at 50 to 60 degree Celsius and they are preserved in 0.5% of phenol. Dose schedule of TAB vaccine. The vaccine is given in two doses of 0.5 ml subcutaneously at an interval of 4 to 6 weeks. Local and general reactions lasting for 1 to 2 days are very frequent. Next type of vaccine is live oral vaccine which is called as typhoral. This consists of a stable mutant of Salmonella typhi strain TY21A which lacks the enzyme 
UDP galactose 4 epimerase that is gal E mutant on ingestion of this live oral vaccine it initiates infection but it self destructs after 4 to 5 cell divisions dose it is an entry coated capsule containing 10 par 9 viable lyophilized mutant bacilli the dose is one capsule is taken orally one hour before food on days 1 3 and 5 notice no antibiotic should be taken in this period next type of vaccine is vi vaccine which is an injectable vaccine that is typhim vi this contains purified vi polysaccharide antigen from the salmonella typhi strain ty2 this is given a single subcutaneous or intramuscular injection and it causes only minimal local reaction treatment of enteric fever initially chloramphenicol was used as treatment but in 1970s resistance became common against chloramphenicol so later ampicillin amoxicillin and cotrimoxazole used current stains are also resistant to these drugs also ampicillin amoxicillin and cotrimoxazole at present ciprofloxacin is the drug of choice ciprofloxacin belongs to fluoroquinolones in case of resistance ceftriaxone is given which is a third generation cephalosporin so initially chloramphenicol was used later ampicillin amoxicillin and cotrimoxazole were used at present the drug of choice is ciprofloxacin and in case of resistance ceftriaxone is given antibacterial therapy along with vaccine is used for the eradication of carrier state and also to prevent relapses now several isolates of typhoid bacilli are once again sensitive to chloramphenicol this is about enteric fever we'll see about the salmonella gastroenteritis and septicemia due to typhoid bacilli in the next part of video thank you